Hi everyone, how are you? Everything fine? I hope everything is fine with you. I'm fine, thanks to God. This is Fortino Academics, and my name is Yomia Sababa from GGG University. Today, I'm gonna be presenting you a tutorial from the course Chemistry and from grade 11. If you are new for Fortino Academics, don't forget to subscribe, all right? I mean, if you wanna receive a personal notification when uh, Fortino Academics releases new videos, please don't forget to subscribe, okay? All right. In order to introduce you with the content of today's tutorial, today we will be looking at uh, Unit 2 of the course Chemistry, uh, which is from grade 11, and the title of uh, the unit or the chapter is uh, Atomic Structure and the Predictable. And with today's tutorial, we will be looking at uh, the start of uh, the chapter, which is about uh, introduction of how uh, atom was discovered, or sim in simple words, we will see the history uh, of atom discovery. And after that, we will be looking, or we will be differentiating between Dalton's atomic theory uh, and the modern atomic theory. So uh, these are the content of today's tutorial. I hope these uh, issues will be interesting to see from the course uh, chemistry. So stay with me, don't go anywhere. Okay, before beginning, let me ask you some questions, okay? The questions uh, are, let's say that you have a soap in, uh, on your hand, a soap, then you start cutting the soap into half, okay? You cut the soap into half, again into half, again into half, and into half, into half, you are breaking the uh, soap half and half and half again. So, will there be any level or will there be a point at which that you cannot break that soap anymore? In other words, will you get the unbreakable and indivisible small particles which made up the soap? That is the question. If you say yes, that's one point. If you say no, I can break the sub continuously or infinitely, that's also another issue. So using today's tutorial, we will be exploring issues to answer such kinds of questions, okay? We will be answering the major uh, question which says what matter is made up of, okay? That is the main concern of today's tutorial. So, uh, as I told you, that this is unit 2, which is atomic structure and, and the predictable. Uh, today, we will be looking at some issues related with the Dalton atomic theory and the modern atomic theory. So, uh, to, just to begin with, uh, let me ask you some startup questions. Uh, for you to discuss with uh, your friends or else you can answer these questions by yourself. So the question is that uh, try to explore, try to explore the basic building blocks of the following. When we say building blocks, yeah, it means uh, exactly as it is, okay? Uh, when we build uh, a house, we use blocks, right? So. Uh, whenever we we build something, uh, we make it from a smaller particles. Okay, so whenever you are uh, constructing a house, you have to use the blocks. So whenever we are uh, constructing proteins, what are the building blocks or what are the smaller particles which made up the proteins? Is the first question. Okay, the second question is similar, which is what are the basic building blocks which make up the steel? Okay, and the last one is a pepper. So when we summarize or if I want to tell you the way to answer these questions, what you have to do is that, let's say take C, which is paper. So take a paper and slice that paper into two or cut it in half then remove the other half and split the rest half again into two 
again splitting into two splitting into two or splitting into half splitting into half splitting into half 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 do you think that there is a point at which you cannot divide that paper into half which means will you reach the point or the smallest point of the paper in which that you are not able to cut it in half if your answer is yes then that the last thing that you have found which is uncuttable is really the building block of paper okay that is the startup or the warm-up for starting a today's tutorial so today we will be looking at historical development of the atomic nature of substances which means that uh, we know substances when we say substance you know when we say substance it means that something uh, that has a mass and volume okay substance which is matter in matter is a substance which has a mass as well as a volume okay which means that for example the mobile that you have is a substance uh, sugar is a substance water is a substance mm, aluminium is a substance so we will be looking at the nature of these substances in atomic uh, way all right so uh, to begin with let's say that this is uh, a timeline beginning from the ancient period up to the current time okay and let's say that the area before this or else the area which belongs to here is before 2000 years okay so before 2000 years some uh, philosophers like democritus uh, were thinking about something and Democritus was thinking about something. He wondered, what if I cut something in half and again in half and again in half, will there be a point at which that I cannot break that substance into half? In other words, will there be a smaller particle which make up that matter which I may not be able to cut it enough and he said yes and he called that the small particles atomos okay currently these atomos are known as atoms right so anyways Democritus before 2000 years uh, hypothesized he's a philosopher as I told you he said that matter was composed of very tiny which means very small and indivisible which means uncuttable particles called atomos so democritus believed that matter is built with building blocks which are called atomos and in greece atomos means it means uncuttable or indivisible okay then uh, by the way this idea of democritus was not accepted at that time even though we now know that it is true but his ideas were not accepted because of the fact that there was also another philosopher which is well known by the way by his other workers said that uh, aristotle said that or I mean he did not believe in atomos which means that he said matter was continuous which means that you can break a matter infinitely there will not be a point at which you cannot subdivide or you cannot break uh, a matter into half so he said that uh, we can break a substance infinitely so by the way because of his popularity than Democritus, this uh, idea was even accepted for nearly 200 years. Okay, 
uh, so beginning from this time up to this time which means before 2000 years in a sense it is hugely uh, distant period of time from the current time anyways here comes the by the way by the way here before 2000 years the ideas about the atom were mainly speculative when we say speculative it means that it is only hypothesis whatever democritus or aristotle have to say they cannot profit by using laboratories because they don't have laboratories at that time okay so whatever they think whatever they think of something or whatever they say it is an hypothesis just we will say lucky guess okay it is just a guess you cannot i mean they uh, were not able to prove it because at that time there was no laboratory then uh, at the time of modern theory of atom which is believed to begin in 1803 here we go okay the modern theory has begun uh, and at this moment we can I mean we f we will find the scientist named John Dalton now here is John Dalton in 1803 using a laboratory experiment or experimentally John Dalton proved that atoms do exist okay so John Dalton is known as to be the father of modern atomic theory and he proposed a completely different uh, theory of mass matter based on a scientific experimental observations scientific experimental observations in a sense that he can prove his ideas using laboratories or using data okay uh, and logical uh, laws and these findings of john dalton was really the basis for a new era of science a new era of science in a sense that the chemistry that you are learning by itself is also uh, huge i mean huge is contributed from john uh, dalton anyways john dalton says that there are matter is made up of extremely small particles known as to be atoms and he said that atom is unbreakable atom is the last least uh, small particle of a given substance or an element or any molecule so everything that we can touch or else everything that is a matter is uh, a result of atom or is made up of atom john dalton said that uh, the building blocks of matter is atom okay so by the way uh, dalton has also worked on the relative masses of atoms and gave symbols to some elements extremely extraordinary because at, at that time it is really difficult to do such experiments anyways he was able to uh, work on relative mass of atoms for a give some elements and even he was able to give uh, symbols to some elements so what did he say he said that atom is the smallest indivisible particle which made up the matter that is his conclusion done here comes the scientific area uh, when near the end of the 19th century around 1890 technology became advanced then scientists were able to prove or able to experiment uh, whatever they think using laboratories so the first thing they do is uh, is atom the least indivisible particle which made up the atom that is the first question they have asked themselves 
and they have uh, exercised or they have uh, invented some laboratory equipment in order to experiment such a question then uh, the person known as to be a crook produced or invented cathode ray tubes that is the beginning of the end actually it is, there is no end for this science but that was the real beginning to study atoms so by using a cathode ray tubes crooks were able to um, recognize or discover cathode rays but the question was was i mean were that rays particles or else just a light or just a ray that was the question or that was uh, the problem left for other scientists uh, to study then in 1897 jg thompson by modifying crookes cathode ray tubes a little bit discovered electrons from the atom by the way jj thompson discovered atom itself is not the least uh, or the smallest particle which made up of uh, the atom but he said that there are also even more smaller particles which made up the atom itself so atom is divisible is his decision so the only thing that he uh, discovered was electrons and he thought that electrons are I mean he discovered that electrons are negative so if they are negative they have to repel each other and they have to you know uh, shall be uh, repelling each other or go away from each other but they are condensed in an atom what makes them stay together what is holding them together is his hypothesis and he hypothesized that there must be a positive particle inside an atom which holds the negative electrons together otherwise electrons will push away from each other then there will not be an atom so that was his uh, proposal and proved by other scientists by the way anyways john uh, jg thompson was the one who discovered electrons the one who who find that they are negatively charged i will show you uh, by the next video how he um, discovered electrons so uh, you have to see part two of this uh, tutorial in order to understand how jj thompson discovered electron even uh, other uh, discoveries that we will be looking at later you have to see a part two of uh, this tutorial anyways next uh, the next contribution by other scientists was in 1911 uh, whose name is ernest reserford discovered the nucleus you know the nucleus yes as proposed by jj thompson as proposed by jj thompson ernest reserford discovered the nucleus but he modified the model of jj thompson's atomic model okay jj thompson said just there are uh, negative electrons here and there here and there but uh, what holding them together was a positive charge and ernest reservoir discovered that yes there is positive charge but not everywhere but at the center of the atom and which uh, is responsible for the weight of an atom itself okay most of the weight of the atom is concentrated on a nucleus nucleus is positively charged and electrons are extremely small in mass and nucleus is we can say that the mass of an atom is approximately equal to the mass of the nucleus so moreover uh, ernest reservoir discovered even that the atom is mostly an empty space where there is a center which is extremely solid and which is positive and we call it a nucleus then he proposed his own atomic model 
but later modified by uh, Bohor in 1913 just he modified the way electrons move around the nucleus okay he proposed that electrons move around the nucleus as similar to the planets circling the sun okay the way electrons move around the nucleus is similar to the way planets circulate the sun which is uh, orbital right orbits they they do have orbits and he he also said that these orbits are energy levels anyways we will see it later uh, about the energy levels by other tutorials but uh, Bohor in 1913 uh, said that electrons move uh, around the nucleus by their own orbits okay that was his discovery uh, so we call uh, Bohor's model of atomic uh, model as planetary model because it it uh, is similar with planets and the sun. That's why we call it planetary model. The next uh, discovery w was by Ernest Rutherford, who discovered the nucleus. Then in 1919, by just modifying uh, the J. G. Thomson's uh, cathode ray tubes again he was able to find or he was able to discover the presence or the existence of protons which are positively charged okay these are positively charged who discovered them Ernest Reservoir when in 1919 using a modified JG Thompson's cathode ray you all right so um, now we know that the nucleus is made up of protons there is again another question if protons are positively charged if they are positive which means that they repel each other right so what is holding them together is the question that is left to be answered by other scientists because uh, protons are positive they they are expected to uh, repel or to push themselves away from each other so but they do exist together what is the reason behind that is the question to be answered later then in 1920 uh, and the, the scientist known Erwin just proposed the quantum mechanical model of uh, an atom which means uh, here he said that electrons electrons are not moving around their orbits okay they are like a wave around the nucleus so uh, wave kind of movement was proposed by uh, Erwin for electrons to uh, move around the nucleus so we call that model quantum mechanical model then finally, uh, in 1932, uh, James Chadwick discovered the neutrons, the neutrons which kept the protons together. Neutrons are also inside the nucleus with similar mass with uh, protons, but with no charge. They are neutral. We have electron negative charge we have uh, a proton which is positively charged and we have neutrons which are non-charged okay so it means that they are uh, neutral all right so uh, let's see step by step how the model of an atom when we say model, it means that the drawing uh, in which the scientists believed atom looks like. Well, okay, what is their imagination uh, of an atom if it was actually to be seen? Okay, so the first person, as you know, was John Dalton. So uh, John Dalton uh, atomic model was just a solid sphere, unbreakable. You know. Uh, a pool ball when you play a pool you know the balls so this model is similar to uh, that of the pool uh, ball and we call it a solid sphere model and was proposed by 
Dalton. And this uh, model was modified by Thomson in 1897, and we call it plum pending model in the sense that uh, as you can see there are negative uh, I mean Thomson only discovered the electrons right after discovering the electrons he just wondered what kept the electrons uh, together in the atom because negative to negative shall be repelling each other so this negative shall go out and this shall go out because of uh, pushing each other away so the body itself, the body itself, I mean this, you know, uh, the more yellow part of uh, the atom, as he proposed, is positively charged uh, part of the atom which kept uh, the electrons together. It is just an hypothesis. He did not prove these positive charges. Then after we have a nuclear model from Rutherford because Rutherford uh, in 1911 has discovered the nucleus okay using a gold foil experiment that we can see by the part two of uh, this tutorial uh, how Rutherford uh, discovered the nucleus you can get it from part two video anyways he proposed this kind of model because of the uh, discovery of the nucleus he said that most of the weight is uh, in the center of the atom and atom is mostly an empty space and uh, the uh, electrons circulate uh, the nucleus in such a way then after uh, this model was modified by Bohor uh, who said that no electrons uh, circulates the uh, nucleus in terms of orbits orbit 1 orbit 2 orbit 3 like planets do circulate the sun then we call it planetary model right uh, and also he uh, said that these uh, orbits are or these shells are energy levels okay so that is his proposal then it is then modified by a quantum uh, i mean uh, by this uh, uh, schrodinger uh, in 1926 he presented a quantum model of an atom in which electrons are invisible okay they are just waves they are just waves and there is as at the center there is a nucleus by the way at 19 uh, in 1926 we uh, i mean the scientists did not discover the neutrons so uh, he just say there is a nucleus which is positively charged then the electrons will circulate the uh, nucleus in a wave-like structure okay wave-like structure like this like this like this and it, it is like boom kind of structure okay as you can see it is something a light right boom kind of structure so this is uh, a cloudy nature of the way electrons move around the nucleus and we call this a quantum model of an atom now uh, let's just begin uh, to see dalton's atomic theory and the modern atomic theory we know that dalton is the first person or the first scientist uh, to present scientifically proven experiment uh, about the presence of an atom then we will say after Dalton there are so many modifications on an atom, right? So we will think of these modifications on a Dalton atomic theory as a modern atomic theory out to the present. And we will see at Dalton's atomic theory and we will compare it with modern atomic theory. By the way, who is Dalton? Dalton uh, is a British physicist, let me read it, British physicist and chemist John Dalton is best known whenever we think of Dalton, we remember him by his developing the atomic theory of elements and molecules. This is the best work that uh, we can remember from him. And he is really, or this work, is really the foundation of the modern physical science uh, you know 
Dalton while uh, pondering the nature of the atmosphere, which means that when he was thinking about or studying about the nature of the atmosphere during a metrolog metrological study in early 80s, uh, Dalton deduced, I mean, Dalton was able to deduce the structure of carbon dioxide. Deduce in a sense that he was able to reach up to the smallest molecule of a carbon dioxide. And he, he was able to see on each molecules of carbon dioxide, he was able to understand that there, there were the same number of atoms constituting each molecule. Molecule A of carbon dioxide, molecule B of carbon dioxide, molecule C of carbon dioxide, molecule D of carbon dioxide, whatever molecule that you have for carbon dioxide, it consists of the same number of atoms, not more, not less. Okay, that was also one of his findings. Uh, he held that all atoms of a given element are identical and different from atoms of every other element. You know, atom of oxygen, atoms of oxygen compared to each other, they are similar in terms of mass, as he said, and also uh, chemical properties. But when atoms of oxygen is compared with, I mean, atoms of oxygen when compared with atoms of carbon, then we can say, or he said, that they are different in terms of size as well as in terms of chemical properties. Uh, and also he was the first to classify elements according to their atomic weights. And because of that, Dalton said the stage for a revolution in a scientific thought. So, yes, he deserved a huge respect in terms of physical size okay so he was a genius indeed now let's see how or what are the basis for dalton to discover the presence or the existence of atoms let's begin and we say postulates of dalton's atomic theory or ideas or uh, what he said about the the atomic is presenting here as a postulate of Dalton's atomic theory. In 1803, John Dalton developed the first modern theory of atom. Okay? Not the first theory, but the first modern, which is based on uh, experiment. It was not only hypothesis, it was not only a thinking, it was proven in a laboratory. So, he developed the first modern theory of atom and proposed the existence of atom, as we have seen before. I mean, as we have seen earlier. Dalton uh, atomic theory was uh, based on the ideas of elements combining with each other to produce compounds. Yes, he observed that. And also the three laws uh, of chemical combination. What are these three laws? By the way, in simple words, Dalton atomic theory was based on these three laws of chemical combination and the ideas of elements forming compounds. Okay, so based on these uh, issues, he was able to discover the presence of atoms scientifically. Now, the law of conservation of mass states that matter is neither created nor destroyed. Okay. One kilogram of something in chemical reaction with two kilograms of something, and the output must be three kilogram of uh, output. Okay, which means that the mass of the reactants or the inputs is exactly equal to the mass of the products in any chemical reaction which means that there is no atom which is destroyed or there is no atom which is newly created everything is the same 
the number of atoms in the inputs and in the outputs is similar i mean uh, the mass is the same remember that for example if you have uh, a one kilogram of milk let's say or let's talk in terms of kilogram here if you have one kilogram of milk and uh, let's say one kilogram of sugar if you combine these two uh, uh, together then you will get an output right and if you measure the mass of that output you will get a two kilogram of output because we have combined i mean we have combined one kilogram of milk with one kilogram of sugar so the output or the chemical uh, combination output will uh, be a mass of two kilograms this is the law of conservation of mass the other law is the law of definite proportion a state that a pure compound is always composed of the same elements combined in a definite ratio by mass uh, in a sense that whenever you get water water from england water from the river water from the lake water from usa water from ethiopia uh, water from your house as long as it is a pure compound you will always get the same combination of hydrogen and oxygen in terms of mass okay in terms of mass always it is two to one whatever the uh, water molecule that you get there is always 11.19 percent of hydrogen in mass and 18 I mean 88.81 percent of oxygen by mass and in proportion two by one volume okay this is true for all molecules of water you cannot find a water molecule with 20 percent hydrogen mass and 80 percent of oxygen you will always find a water combining hydrogen and oxygen with a mass of 11.19% of hydrogen and 88.81% of oxygen by mass. That is a law of definite proportion. And the third law is the law of multiple proportion. It states that when two different compounds, let's say carbon monoxide, which is CO and carbon dioxide which is co2 okay different two compounds which are formed by the same elements both carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide are made up of carbon and oxygen which are the same elements then the masses of one of the elements the masses for example the mass of the oxygen in the two compounds in carbon monoxide as well as in a carbon dioxide compared to a given mass of the other uh, element is in a small whole number ratio always carbon to oxygen one one carbon dioxide two to one that is the way that uh, chemical com combinations are being present for example uh, we have carbon and oxygen from two compounds which are carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide so in carbon monoxide we have 16 uh, oxygen in terms of mass and 12 in the for carbon this is carbon monoxide when we come to the uh, other one you cannot find two oxygens here 15 here 16 you cannot you cannot find it like that the same mass 16 16 as you can see 2 i mean 32 to 16 which is 2 to 1 okay 2 to 1 here this one 1 to 1 all right so here 12 1 12 for 1 16 which is 
116 for 112 and this is 1 to 1 here 112 for 2 16 which means we have 2 to 1 ratio and 2 and 1 and 1 and 1 are yes a small whole number ratio whole numbers in a sense 0 1 2 3 kinds of numbers but you cannot find 1 to 1.5 it is not possible 2 to 0 0.5 is not possible which means that such kinds of combinations uh, in terms of mass comparison are impossible okay so uh, let's go to Dalton's atomic model you know uh, the way that Dalton imagined the atom to look like is similar to the uh, pool ball which is this one this is the Dalton's atomic model okay now let's keep going using the, those rules the above rules Dalton proved that these laws are entirely reasonable if the elements are composed of tiny particles which he called atoms okay the three laws that we have seen above will make sense if elements are composed of tiny particles which are indivisible uh, as per his thought and he called them atoms okay and he said that an atom is the smallest fundamental particle of an element just to summarize what dalton has to say about an atom here we go the basic postulates of dalton's atomic theory are summarized as follows the first one is all elements are made up of small particles called atoms okay the building blocks of an atom or an element are atoms and he said that atoms are the smallest the smallest okay the least small particle which made up the matter and they are indivisible and indestructible when we say indivisible it means that you cannot break it anymore when we say indestructible it means they cannot be created nor uh, destroyed uh, by a chemical reaction that is indestructibility but this one uh, has been proved to be wrong in a modern science they are now atoms are divisible anyways here is the explanation if you see gold at this point by magnifying using electronic microscope even if if it is possible then you will see that gold is made up of such building blocks which are atoms of gold you see atom one two three four these atoms together coming together make up the gold matter all right so the other example is a copper if you see at this point you can think about of uh, the way it is built up by a small uh, building blocks that we know atoms similar to this one okay as you can see atoms are coming together in order to make up the matter at this uh, case copper so this is a way uh, that dalton atomic theory postulates the way atoms to be okay uh, all elements are made up of uh, tiny indivisible and indestructible uh, small particles which are called atoms these are the atoms of copper and these are the atoms of gold the second postulate of uh, dalton's atomic theory with that all atoms of a given element are identical in mass and in other chemical properties 
this is his thought but it was uh, proved wrong uh, because sometimes okay atoms of the same element may not be uh, equal in terms of uh, mass so this is wrong actually it was proven to be uh, wrong anyways this is one of his postulates in order to explain what he has to say he said that the uh, atom of the same element for example the atom of oxygen if you have here one oxygen in the second oxygen their atoms are similar in terms of similar in a sense identical copy and paste there is no difference in mass they are the same in mass as well as in all other properties okay but if we compare atoms of oxygen with other atoms you may observe differences in mass and chemical properties and in order to explain it more let you can see this one this is similar atoms of oxygen and they balance each other but here you can see atoms of different elements which are different in size or in mass the third postulate of uh, Dalton's atomic theory is atoms are neither created nor destroyed in chemical reaction okay uh, this is the law of conservation of mass as you know so in order to explain this one first they are not breakable okay you cannot break atoms anymore because they are the smallest uh, particles which made up the atom as per the thought of Dalton but I mean even more to explain this if you combine two let's say hydrogen molecules with one oxygen or in terms of colors if you combine four uh, green circles with two blue circles you have to get an output which contains the two blue atoms in the fours i mean the four uh, green atoms one two blue one two blue four greens and here we have one two and three and four greens the only thing that happened was a rearrangement of uh, their position because of a chemical reaction first this was bonded with this one but after a reaction this is bonded with this one and this one is bonded with this two so what happened is uh, atoms just rearranged their uh, place in order to create a chemical reaction that is uh, the other point that you can consider from this image anyways what we have to say as a postulate of uh, Dalton's atomic theory that atoms are neither created nor destroyed which means that after a chemical reaction you cannot find only three greens which means you destroyed an atom or you cannot find five green atoms which means you are creating some atom right so it is not possible that's why we get exactly the same number of atoms after a chemical reaction okay uh, the fourth postulate of uh, dalton's atomic theory is that compounds are formed when atoms of more than one element combine yes as we have seen uh, earlier four greens are combined with two blues in order to give us a compound which consists of a blue combined with two greens a blue combined with two greens similarly as you can see here a molecule of a green plus a molecule of a blue uh, will give us uh, because of uh, exchanging or rearrangement of atoms they will form okay uh, when atoms of more than one element this element and this element uh, combine each other in order to make a compound this is the fourth postulate of 
Dalton's atomic theory. Uh, and the fifth one is in a given compound, let's say water as an example, the relative number and types of atoms are constant. Okay, uh, if you have water uh, from your let's say from your house, if you have a water which you can purchase, uh, if you have water from the river, from the ocean, whatever the source of a water that you have, as long as that is uh, a pure compound, there is always the same number of atoms for oxygen and atoms for hydrogen, the same number, okay? So it can be explained uh, like this. This is water, right? wherever the place it is, whether it is in America, whether it is in UK, whether it is in Ethiopia, this bond, you can read it as water. Okay, that's it. Then, let's see the postulates of modern atomic theory. By the way, mm, Dalton himself is considered to be uh, the beginner of a modern atomic theory we have seen that because he has uh, discovered the presence of atoms which are vital for uh, modern science but modern theories about physical structure of atoms did not begin until jj thompson discovered the electrons in 1897 okay until 1897 uh, they were believing that atoms are not structured they are just the last uh, when i say structured they are not uh, make or they are not made up of any other small particles they by themselves are the smallest particles so there is no physical structure uh, study or theories about atoms until 1897 where jj thompson uh, discovered the electron then after, as we have seen in the history of uh, atomic theory, so many scientists adding their own ideas, adding their own theories, then uh, we have reached the level of a quantum uh, atomic model. Anyways, towards the end of the 19th century, which means in 1890-something, various experimental discoveries revealed the existence of subatomic particles okay uh, in 1932 uh, in anyways at the 19th century uh, scientists were able to discover the subatomic particles which means particles which made up the atom okay now atom is structured which means that we can break atoms uh, even more into electrons into protons and into neutrons these are the subatomic particles of an atom and also there was uh, a discovery of isotopes isotopes in a sense that you know uh, john dalton said said that uh, the mass of a given atom for a given element is similar in each of that element which means that the uh, oxygen atom is similar for every oxygen molecule I mean, for every oxygen uh, atom or element. But that was not true because of the presence of or the discoveries of isotopes. You can find oxygen atoms with different weights. And that is what we call isotopes. Isotopes are uh, the same kind of elements with different masses. They are oxygens, but their masses are different, and we call that isotopes of oxygen. So isotopes are uh, elements with a different mass, and so on, so many discoveries. So in light of these findings, the theory uh, of uh, Dalton about the atom was, uh, I mean, was modified because of the such findings, okay? so. Uh, what are the modifications made by the modern atomic theory is present next. So the modern atomic theory can be summarized as follows. The first one, which is similar to Dalton's atomic theory, is that atoms are 
the smallest particles of elements that can take part in a chemical reaction okay in a time of chemical reaction the atoms of that element rearrange with the atoms of the other element in order to make a compound and they are the smallest particles which are involved in a chemical reaction that is similar to that of the uh, john dalton's atomic theory an atom is divisible yes this is the basic difference between the john dalton's atomic theory and the modern atomic theory john dalton said that atoms are indivisible but the modern atomic theory says that they are divisible into what into uh, electrons protons and neutrons these are the smallest uh, particle which made up the atom this is the conclusion of the modern atomic theory by the way an atom is an atom is also indestructible which is similar to that of the findings of uh, john dalton uh, indestructible means that atoms can neither be created nor destroyed during ordinary chemical reactions but sometimes when uh, we are facing uh, nuclear reactions other than ordinary chemical reactions this may not be true because because of nuclear reactions atoms may be destructible okay that is uh, the point that you have to remember just yes, here we are simply talking about uh, ordinary chemical reactions atoms of the same element may not be identical in mass but john dalton said that atoms of the same element are identical in mass but the modern atomic theory has disproved that and uh, discovered the existence of isotopes and concluded that atoms of the same element may not be identical in mass you can find atoms of the same element with different masses because of the presence of isotopes okay isotopes are just elements same the same element with different masses okay an atom with different mass that is an isotopes of a given element the fourth postulates i mean postulate of the modern atomic theory is that atoms of the same elements have identical chemical property which is similar to that of the dalton's atomic theory atoms of different elements have different chemical properties which is similar to that of the dalton's atomic theory and finally atoms of two or more elements combine in a simple whole number ratios to form compounds as we have seen in the dalton's atomic theory atoms were combining with each other from different elements in a simple whole number which is zero one two kind of uh, relationship okay we cannot find 1.5 oxygen for one uh, atom of carbon is not possible the only possible combination is two to one one to one three to two as long as they are simple whole numbers yes we are right but if we say into fractions it is impossible all right that is a point that you have to capture so the explanations uh, the, the explanation for this one as you may remember is given uh, on the postulates of dalton's atomic theory so you can uh, see it there how do the modern theory explains the mass laws similar to that of the uh, dalton atomic theory chemical compounds are formed when atoms combine a whole number ratio this is a law of multiple proportion which is similar to that of the dalton's atomic theory upon which uh, i mean this is the law that uh, dalton's atomic theory was based upon anyways the modern theory itself the i mean do not violate the three 
loss of a chemical combination. The other is a given compound always had the same relative number in types of atoms. As we have seen, water from America, whatever the source of a water, as long as it is a pure compound, always you will find the same relative in the types of a relative number, which means uh, oxygen one, hydrogen two, that, that is a number, type hydrogen in oxygen is a type. So for a given compound, if you say hydrochloric, Always you, you will find one atom of hydrogen with one atom of chlorine. So that is a number and the type is hydrogen and chlorine. That's it. And we say that this is a law of constant composition or the law of definite proportion by its other name. In any chemical reaction, the mass of the reactant equals the mass of the reaction product is this is the law of conservation of mass provided that there is no remaining reactants if you use all the reactants so the mass of the uh, all reactants used in a chemical combination is equal to the mass of the products okay this is a law of conservation of mass which was uh, also uh, respected or which was not also violated by the uh, Dalton's atomic theory here also the modern atomic theory uh, did not violate these laws and this is a way how these uh, modern theories explain the mass laws okay this is the end of today's tutorial okay we have finished part one of unit two uh, so if you liked the video please don't forget to like comment and share if you have any question uh, you can present your question using the comment area or else you can communicate me with uh, the official Facebook page of Fortino Academics which is at Fortino Academics or else you can use uh, my email address which is ermiermias at gmail.com okay if you still did not subscribe Fortino Academics don't forget to do it now okay subscribe for Sino academics so until we meet again by other tutorials stay safe see you bye bye